Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and in this video I'm going to talk about interstitial fluid. Interstitial fluid is a term that confuses students. If you ask them what is a capillary, they know that, they know what's in blood, they know what cells are, and the tissues are made up of cells, but if you ask them what interstitial fluid is, they're confused. And that's too bad, because that's going to be found between the capillary and the cells. And so what is it like, or what does it look like? Well, think about this. This doctor right here is doing arthroscopic surgery on a shoulder. And so how does that work? You've maybe seen videos of that. Well, they put a camera in, and then they're going to introduce fluid in there. But basically, what does it look like inside our body? If you take a camera and put it inside our body, it's not just blood everywhere. The blood is going to be confined to the blood vessels, but there's still going to be fluid inside our body. And what is that fluid? That fluid is called interstitial fluid. And so really, it's going to be what separates all of our cells from the circulatory system. Since we have a closed circulatory system, that means that the blood is going to be maintained within these vessels the whole way around the loops. But how does the material get out of the blood and eventually get into our cells? It goes through the interstitial fluid. And so if you visualize it like this, it's a fluid on the inside of our body that surrounds all the cells, then you're getting there. And so there's microcirculation that takes place at the level of the capillary. And so as the blood is flowing away from the heart, it'll work its way down eventually to the capillary. And what holds the pressure inside a capillary? Well, there's going to be hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure is going to be the pressure out on the capillary. It's pushing out. If you want to get an idea of what that really is, what is that hydrostatic pressure? Well, if you were young and you played with a hose when you're having a water fight, if you could ever get a hold of the hose, and you put your finger on the front of it, you could increase that pressure and squirt it farther. And so that pressure on the inside of the capillary out on that fluid is going to be hydrostatic pressure. And that's going to move fluid outside of the capillary into the interstitial fluid around it. There's also going to be osmotic pressure. What's osmotic pressure? That's going to be water flowing in because we're going to have a higher solute concentration on the inside. So the combination of these two pressures, hydrostatic and then osmotic pressure, is going to create that blood pressure on the inside of our vessels. Again, it's going to be probably greater hydrostatic pressure on the capillary or on the artery side and less on the venule side. Um, where does the water go though? When it leaks out, what's going to happen to this water or this fluid as it moves out? Eventually, it's going to move into what are called lymph vessels. And those lymph vessels will return that fluid to the blood. And so the major parts of the blood stay within the capillary, but the fluid is going to move between the two. And so I put together this little um, diagram to show you that. And so this is a capillary. So the capillary is going to be, if I were to ask you what it's made up of, the capillary itself is going to be made up of cells. And so the surrounding of the capillary, or that tube of the capillary, is going to be made up of endothelial cells. So it's going to be these really thin cells. What's on the inside then of our capillary? This is going to be plasma on the inside, and then we're going to have these red blood cells. We also have platelets in here, and we're going to have white blood cells as well. But if we're just talking about interstitial fluid, this plasma on the inside of our blood is very similar to the interstitial fluid. And so what's going to be in the interstitial fluid? Well, there's going to be a lot of water, but we're also going to have sugar, salt, hormones, neurotransmitters, carbon dioxide, oxygen, and so it serves as a conduit between the capillary and the tissues itself. And so what's a gas that the cells are going to consume? They're going to consume oxygen. How does it get there? Well, it's going to be consumed here in the mitochondria, but it's going to diffuse from the red blood cells through the plasma, through the interstitial fluid, and it's eventually going to move here. What's going to happen to the carbon dioxide? It's going to build up inside the mitochondria, it's going to diffuse out, it's going to diffuse through the interstitial fluid, it's going to diffuse through here, and it's going to be um, carried as bicarbonate on the red blood cells. And so really inside our body, what do we have? We have cells, and so red blood cells, the lining of the capillary are cells, and then clearly all the cells that make up our tissues, and then we're going to have fluids. And really that's it. That's about the two things that we have. We're going to have some things obviously that are matrix made up from material that are produced by cells. Um, but the interstitial, you can see, is very important, that interstitial fluid, because it's going to be what surrounds our cells, and it's going to be how nutrients get from the blood into our cells and waste products get back. That's interstitial fluid. It's clear. If you really want to know what it looks like, well, think about the plasma inside blood, and that's essentially the same thing. Um, and I hope that's helpful.